Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Google Cloud Next 2018. Brought to you by Google Cloud and its ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back everyone. Live here in San Francisco's theCUBE's coverage of Google Cloud and their big conference, Google Next, hashtag Google Next 18. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Their next guest is Adam Siegelman, Vice President of Developer Relations at Google. Man, making it all happen, keeping the trains on time, keeping everyone motivated. Welcome to theCUBE, thanks for joining us. Thanks, glad to be here. So first of all, take a step back. What is your job at Developer Relations? I mean, you know, are you herding cats? Are you feeding them you know, great code? Are you overseeing a big team? Google's been very big on open source. You've been part of the code program going back many, many years. Google's always been a steward of open source. Yeah. And developers are just devouring open source in a big way right now. What's look, your job? Uh, so I run, I look after developer relations. There's around 20, 22 million developers in the world. And now uh, we want to make every single one of them successful. And uh, build cool things, learn new technology, be part of community. You know, that's something that's super important. So we, I try to rally all of Google, you know, to sort of stand for developers. One of the big trends we're seeing now in open source is that it's becoming such a good norm. It used to be, I remember the days when I was uh, getting into the business back in the late 80s, early 90s. Open source, we kind of stealed some code here and you kind of was radical. It's so normal now and, the, and you start to see the clean upstream etiquette, upstream projects, everyone's contributing, co-creating for a common good, monetizing downstream has been really well defined. And there's some examples of probably where that could be better, but for the most part, I think people are generally are seeing a positive contribution. That's a community dynamic. How do you go the next level for, for developers? Because this has turned out to be quite uh, an opportunity to one, learn, meet new people, learn new skills, and take advantage of new technologies. How do you foster that community? What are you guys doing? Because no one wants the vendors to try to put their fingers in these upstream projects, but they're super important, they're all participating. What's the, what's the formula, how is that evolving? How do you see that? Um, you know, Google's been doing open source for maybe 20 years, you know, some big contributions, early days, things like GCC, you know, like foundational compiler technology. And we have whole businesses that sort of, you know, build around open source, Chrome and the web, um, Android for mobile. And now we see Kubernetes and cloud and uh, TensorFlow and AI and new things like Knative and Istio. So I think, I think there's a course there where open source can really shape whole ecosystems and create a lot of opportunity and a lot of innovation. Um, and I think the challenge in all that is doing a really healthy, positive, community-centric way. And I think that's a real learning we've had in the last couple of years is uh, great leaders like Sarah Nov Novotny have really helped guide us and really inter interface with open source communities and foster the right, so you know, the right kind of community interactions. And uh, that's a big focus. We're trying to bring that here also. Yeah, and so you had a keynote coming up. I know you got a hard stop and we're going to try to get as many questions as we can yeah. in. But I want to ask you, what are you going to be talking about on your keynote? Yeah. What's the topic? Yeah. What do you, because this is a, yeah. I won't say coming out party for Google Cloud in particular, but clearly setting a couple stakes in the ground on what's going on. Yeah. Enterprise focus, checking the boxes, table stakes are being met, and real tech, high performance, large scale, Really a good developer uh, environment. What are you going to talk about at the keynote? Um, well, I think you know the customers like HSBC and Target and others are coming to us not for table stakes, they're coming to us for what's next. They're coming to us for massive scale Kubernetes, they're coming to us for AI. So um, you know, I think that the introductions we've had so far, things like the cloud services platform, Istio 1.0, Knative, like it really shows a bright future of service and, and AI driven applications. Well, we're going to talk in the developer keynote tomorrow in day three is uh, really three themes, innovation, openness and open source, and then that community theme that we were just talking about. And one area of innovation that we're going to talk about is Melly McFessel, who I, th I think you talked to uh, earlier, is going to talk about our approach to cloud build and integrated tool chains. Um, uh, we have a lot of technology we're going to open up in sort of the DevOps uh, space. But you know, it's really a mentality, and this is the thing that I think is really neat coming to Google, is it's not just about pushing code sort of down the waterfall to production, it's about building services for users and building services other developers consume and really flowing from code right out to running services. And then when you're done, the service doesn't turn on for everybody. You start routing traffic to it, right? You run canaries. So it's a big step change in how we think about continuous delivery and DevOps. We really want to land that in the keynote tomorrow. So I, I got to give some props to my partner, John Furrier. In 2010, John, you, you, you said data is the new development kit. And that was a while ago and it's, it's turned out, in my view anyway, to be true. But 
Adam, it's also changed sort of the profile of the developer. Data hackers, statisticians, mathematicians, artists, and so it's, it's changed the way in which we think about a developer. I wonder if you could talk about that in terms of how that's changed developer relations. Um, Yufeng Guao is going to do a section AI in the keynote, and he does these videos on, on YouTube that literally millions of people have watched, on how to get started in machine learning. And he's got a great line in there, uh, which I think is attributed to him, that says AI is programming with data. And so I, th I think we're in a world where all of this data of user interactions and event streams and Internet of Things and you know, mobile applications, yeah. we now have a lot of data to program you know, the world on. And I think it's an incredible yeah. opportunity for developers. But the flip side, if we just restrict it to like a couple thousand data scientists, it doesn't open up the world to everyone. Yeah. So I think beyond that 20 million, like what are the next 20 million we could pull in with AutoML? You know, the next 20 million yeah. that can do uh, SQL queries and can use uh, BigQuery and do uh, ML and BigQuery. So that's, that's the vision of like opening it up to more people, more And the democratization of software, I mean, it's interesting, you know, that's my background in software engineering, computer science. In the 80s, you were called software engineering. Then it became software developer, then it became a software hacker. Now we're hearing words like software artisan. So with, with you know, I interviewed a partner, you know, she said, you don't need three PhDs to three degrees in computer science to do development anymore. The aperture is widening big time because now there's now craft is coming back to development. Because a lot of these abstractions, both on the business and tech side, are enabling different personas to come in. Yeah, I mean, and it's not, it's not legacy development anymore, it's heritage development, right? <laughs> so I, yeah, I, I, love, I love that developers have the freedom to define their own titles and define yeah. their own tools they want to work with and do a mix of the old and the new and mix it up. And so I think it's really important that we're not too narrow in how we define people. And you don't have to be this tall to ride the ride. And we really welcome everybody yeah. Yeah. in yeah. to be part of the community. And if your entrance to ML is auto ML, but then eventually you graduate to TPUs, that's just fantastic. And how about crypto developers? I mean, they've exploded with innovation. I mean, what are you, what are you seeing there? I, I could just go back to security. I think every company is really wrestling with security right now. You know, how do they get two-factor everywhere? How do they stop phishing? How do they keep their employees safe? How do they have shielded VMs? Like at every level of security. And, I, and it's a challenge to get developers to think about security sometimes. Like it's the operators that have to live yeah. with it, and so, you know, getting, uh, understanding your dependencies way yeah. back up with developers are like, oh, I'll just use this library and I'll just use this library. How do you ensure you're using trusted, you know, dependencies back there? You don't have vulnerabilities you're introducing by taking dependencies and other code. So yeah. I think there's a lot of education and best practices to share with developers to get them to, to care about security. My final question, I know you got to go, I just yeah. want to get out there. You know, years ago when we used to, Dave and I used to hear on the Cube, you know, people come on, we want to win the developers. Well, no, they're not winnable. You don't win developers. You earn trust <laughs> and you earn relationships and then they might work with you and enjoy the, the services that, that you, they might provide to them. So I always kind of used to poo-poo that. But now with the cloud, you're seeing, like again, more range of developers. So how do you keep developers happy? That might be a better question because in order to earn and, and have a relationship with people who are going to be contributing yeah. IP and building IP, how do you um, keep harmonious relations? How do you keep people happy? You know, we hear things like technical debt bothers people and people are like, oh, technical debt, you know, shipping code times. So this, how, how do you think about that? Because keeping people happy is a broad answer, but in general, what's your view on keeping developers happy, harmonious, loving, working together, doing the things uh, that they love to do. You know, it's, different, it's a little different at Google's nursing place because there's like never an us and them with developers. Yeah. I mean, this is a company with tens of thousands of engineers on staff. Most of the senior leadership team have an engineering background, so it's kind of more like we live in the community of developers. All, my engineers are all over the world living in developer communities, and so, I think it really does matter how we show up and, and how we interact, but, but we sort of live it every day. So I don't think we have a hill to climb so much as get to developers. I think we just have to have a really clear narrative and then a really keen ear to listen to what they need. And that, that's what I'm trying to listening, orient the team that, around. I think that's a great answer, listening. Yeah. What do you want? You know? <laughs> What's important to you? Yeah. <laughs> and then you have that perspective yourselves. Yeah, well I mean, we're sort of a developer-centric company and I think the important thing is we, we can put them at the center of everything we do. And I, I use the word with my team, it's empathy. We have empathy for developers. You know, they have great jobs, great opportunities, but also great challenges. And as humans, yeah. can we have empathy for them? I was hosting a panel one time, it was, a bunch of, it was a night event, it was all out of fun. 
bunch of uh, nerds on there. We're talking tech and on the hood, talking about developers, all this stuff. Range of questions. And one guy introduced himself as the, I'm the CTO, I'm the chief toy officer. <laughs> because we play with technology, then we turn it into product. And that's kind of, you guys brought a lot of toys out here with Google, all this open source. And then, and then if we can like amplify that by all the amazing talent that's in the world. At Google I.O., we host the developer student clubs from Indonesia, and these young Indonesian women are teaching other college kids yeah. how to do Android development. So if we could bring that kind yeah. of magic to all of our assets, to like the cloud assets, I think there's this amazing yeah. receptive community out there that could you know, give us a whole bunch of new ideas that we don't just get in yeah. South of Market, San Francisco. It's inspiring, it's inspiring to see people build things with open source, pay it forward, contribute upstream, be part of a community. This is what it's all about, developer relations. Congratulations, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thank Richard you, so Adam. glad to be here. Thanks guys thanks, for Adam. great stuff. This is theCUBE, paying it forward, content here from Google Next, all out in the open, co-creating with Google, Google's team, Google's customers, the best engineers, the best talent here at Google Cloud. I'm the, with theCUBE, I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante, thanks for watching. Stay with us, more coverage after this short break.